Hi, I'm Rewind Mike, and I'm back with more retro goodness. Let's look at a Nintendo game, and this time it's one that I didn't hear about until I was much older. It's Shadow of the Ninja. It's a platforming game in the vein of the Ninja Gaiden series, with a bunch of improvements and one feature that'll really blow Ninja Gaiden out of the water. From the start to the finish, you can have a friend play with you. That's right, there's a two-player mode. One player will use the blue ninja, Hayate, while the other player will use the red ninja, Kade. There's no real difference between the two ninjas besides Hayate is, you know, a male and Kade's a female, being one of the first male-female teams in Nintendo gaming. Again, just like Ninja Gaiden, this game's controls and gameplay are very similar, and the difficulty of the game matches as well. You won't be getting through this game anytime soon, oh no no no. There are no continues, you only get about 3 lives to beat the whole game, so trial and error comes into effect very heavy on this one. Although the gameplay is straightforward, there are still some spots where it can be tough to navigate through the game, performing crazy jumps that would insta-kill you causing a game over way before desired. Each of the ninjas wields a katana at the start of the game, and as in many Nintendo games, there are pickups throughout, like shurikens and bombs. Something that separates this game from Ninja Gaiden is the fact that you can change your main weapon as well. There is a chain weapon with a hook on the end that you can pick up along the way. On top of that, you'll be able to do some ninja climbing, ninja running, you can ninja jump, and you ninja grapple onto ceiling and ninja climb up that ceiling. Go Ninja! Go Ninja! Go! The music in this game couldn't get any better. It's very typical Nintendo badassery. It has a really good sound and gives the game a satisfying feeling. There is that special Ninja feeling to it, making it more a complete Ninja adventure. On to the enemies in the game. There are nothing to write home about sprite-wise. But the way the game animates them and makes them do their thing is something else, let me tell you. Not everything just comes out on the screen and continues to move until you jump out of their way. They will stick around and wait for you to kill them or they'll kill you before you can move on. This game is no joke and doesn't hold your hand, so don't expect to start this one up and martyr yourself through to the end, cause it's not happening. Shadow of the Ninja has about 16 stages in its 5 levels. Now each area looks unique and different, so nothing ever feels the same. All the backgrounds and foregrounds are fresh, and that was nice to see that there are some high caliber games out there on the NES that I haven't heard about. Now don't think you're getting off easy here, nope! There are more than your fair share of mini boss and boss fights throughout the game. If you've been watching my videos, you would know those are my favorite parts of retro games. The boss fights. High octane, fast paced and blood rushing boss fights. That's what made retro games intense and I can't get enough of them. In a sea of two player games for the Nintendo, Shadow of the Ninja is a damn good one. But it is fairly uncommon and it can run upwards of $20 on eBay for a buy it now. If you do what I did and you get it on an auction, you can get it for around $10 with shipping, and it's worth every damn penny. Now I hope you guys have fun watching my videos as they're made for you to enjoy from me. Now if you do, let me know by liking, comment, and subscribing on this video. And as always, I'm Rewind Mike, and thanks for watching. What'd you guys think I was going to review a ninja game and forget what month it was? NINJA MIKE!